the switch is closed, the current immediately changes from zero to a maximum value in the circuit. Because there is some initial change in that current, there's going to be a change of magnetic flux. This induces an EMF. And for the same reason, when we open our switch back up again, the current is not going to immediately fall to zero. It's going to take some time to do that. That's going to create a changing magnetic flux. That is going to, um, it's going to create something that we call self-inductance. Okay. So self-inductance is when a changing flux through a circuit arises from the circuit itself. It generates its own EMF because there's a changing flux of the magnetism from the current in the circuit. Okay, so that self-induced EMF is equal to minus the inductance of the device times the change in current over the change in time. So L is the inductance of the device. So let's talk about the inductance of a solenoid. Our solenoid is our coil of wire. So if our EMF that is induced in the solenoid when a changing current running, runs through it is equal to minus L delta I over delta T. The inductance of the inductor is a, a quantity based on the geometrical properties of the inductor. And for a solenoid, that is going to be equal to mu zero, which is the permeability of free space right here. You look it up on your equation sheet, four pi times 10 to the minus seven Tesla meters over amperes times the number of turns in your loop squared, or the number of turns of your solenoid squared, times the cross-sectional area of your inductor divided by its length. So that's how you would calculate the inductance of an inductor if you know all of its geometrical properties. Okay. And um, inductance has a unit called the unit of Henry. Now, what I want to mention, which I think is kind of cool, <laughs> It's important thing to um, note is that remember how capacitors store energy. They store energy in their electric field and the energy stored in a capacitor is one half times the capacitance times the voltage squared. But inductors store energy in their magnetic field and the energy stored in an, in an inductor is one half times the inductance times the current squared. All right, so what happens we, when we have a resistor and an inductor in a circuit? We talked about what happens when we have a resistor and a capacitor in a circuit. What about an inductor? And here we're talking about it in terms of a DC circuit. So we've got a direct current source supplying us with voltage and current. So that voltage and current in the circuit coming from that, let's say, battery remains constant in time. The amount coming from the battery is constant in time. So here we have a battery, let's say, connected to a resistor and an inductor. When supplied with voltage from a direct current source, the current in our resistor inductor or RL circuit cannot be turned off or on instantaneously. So the current will increase whenever I close the switch in a similar way as the voltage across a capacitor in our resistor capacitor circuits. So here's the, the, the curve for how the current increases across our inductor when we turn the, when we flip the switch, close the circuit. Um, so the current is equal to, the current at some time is equal to the maximum current we could achieve, which is going to be the, um, EMF of our DC power source divided by the resistance times one minus E to the minus T over tau. And in this case, tau, our characteristic time of our circuit is equal to the inductance of the inductor divided by the resistance. The characteristic time for an RC circuit was the resistance times the capacitance. Now, if we instead, um, once our inductor has fully stored up as much um, energy as it can in its magnetic field, then we can disconnect it from the, um, from the DC source and let the inductor um, discharge through our resistor here. And 
as it does that, the current in the circuit decreases according to this equation right here, which looks very similar to how I, um, the voltage across a capacitor decreases when um, disconnected from a power source and discharged across a resistor. So we are going, we are going to practice with a direct current RL circuit. We have a 12.6 volt battery and it's in circuit with a 30 millihenry inductor and a 0 0.15 ohm resistor. And we close this first switch here at time t is equal to zero. And we're gonna find the current after one time constant has elapsed, the voltage across the resistor after that one time constant, and the rate of change of current after one time constant. Here we have a circuit. We have a 12.6 volt battery connected in series with a 0 0.15 uh, ohm resistor with a 30 millihenry inductor. And here we have a switch. And so we're going to close the switch at time t equals zero. Close the switch. Find the current running through the circuit after one time constant has elapsed. So in our resistor inductor uh, circuit, the current is given by, uh, the current at any time is given by the maximum current we can achieve times one minus e to the minus t over tau. Tau is our characteristic time constant for an RL circuit, a, re a resistor inductor circuit, and that characteristic time constant is equal to the inductance of our inductor divided by the resistance. So we're looking for the current after just one time constant, so that means that T must equal tau, okay? So this is going to be equal to our maximum current that we can achieve minus times one minus E to the minus one. Uh, sorry, that should be minus one um, because if we have minus tau over tau, uh, if we're looking at the time constant T is equal to tau, then our exponent here would just be minus one. Okay, so the maximum current that we can achieve is going to just be um, using Ohm's law is just going to be the EMF supplied by our va battery divided by the resistance of our circuit times 1 minus E to the minus 1 is 0 0.368. Okay, so our current at one time constant, T is equal to tau, is equal to our EMF of our battery divided by the resistance times 0 0.632. Or 63.2% of the maximum current that we can achieve is the current that is within the circuit at one time constant. After one time constant, T is equal to tau. Okay. So if we do this, then my EMF is 12.6 volts divided by my resistance is 0 0.15 ohms and multiply that by 0 0.632, okay? And then I find that my current after one time constant is 53.1 ampere. So if we wanted to find the voltage drop after, uh, the voltage drop across our resistor right here after one time constant, T is equal to tau, we would again refer to our Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. And so we know that at at time t is equal to tau, our current in the circuit at that time was 53.1 amperes. So then the voltage across my resistor at t is equal to tau is going to be 53.1 amperes times the resistance of my resistor, 0 0.15 ohms, and that equals 7.97 volts at t is equal to tau. What is the rate of change of the current after one time constant? To think about that, we're gonna set up Kirchhoff's loop rule for our circuit. Remember that Kirchhoff's loop rule tells us that the sum of all the potentials of all of our elements along the loop has to equal zero. So then we'll have that the potential of my battery plus the potential across my resistor plus the potential across my inductor, the sum of all of those has to equal zero. Now as I'm moving around in my loop from the negative to positive terminal of my battery, 
that potential difference we gain 12.6 volts. Now as we move through in the direction of current, our resistor, we're lose, decreasing our potential. So the potential across that we could represent as a decrease in our potential, so minus the 7.97 volts that we found up here, which was the voltage drop across our resistor at time constant t equal tau. Okay, because remember, we're looking for the rate of change of the current after one time constant. So we're evaluating this equation at t is equal to tau. Okay, and then we've got our um, uh, potential across our inductor here. And so that's going to be plus, I'm going to write it as plus, minus L delta I over delta T. And that all has to equal zero. So the induced EMF, this is the induced EMF that we get across our inductor here. And so the equation for the EMF induced by an inductor is going to be minus the inductance of that inductor times the change in current over the change in time. Okay. So if I've got 12.6 volts minus 7.97 volts, that's 4.63 volts, and that is going to equal the inductance times delta I over delta T. So if I divide both sides by the inductance, so if I do that, then I find that my change in current is going to equal to 4.63 volts divided by the inductance of my inductor. So this is going to be 4.63 volts divided by 30 millihenries. So that's 30 times 10 to the minus 3 henries. If I stick that in there, I find that my rate of change of current at time t is equal to tau is 154 amperes per second. So the unit would be amperes per second, that's a unit of a rate of change of current. So a change in current ampere over time, so over second. And if we wait many, many, many time constants, this rate of change of current will become zero.